It is the duty of the free man to resist tyranny at every turn. Every man will either watch his freedom stripped away or take action to protect what he loves. Introducing the A3, the newest revolutionary body armor from Armored Republic. The A3 is the new standard for lightweight multi-hit body armor. A3 plates are incredibly light at 4.6 pounds. The patented design captures fragmentation while remaining multi-hit capable. The A3 will stop up to M80 ball, yet comes in at only 0.7 inches thick. The A3 is the thinnest NIJ.06 compliant or certified composite standalone plate that includes the drop test. The A3 is the first of its kind, patent pending, that combines an alloy strike face with polyethylene backing revolutionizing body armor technology by providing strength and durability while remaining sleek and maneuverable. The A3 is the new standard in lightweight body armor. The fight against tyranny just got stronger. So, what happens when examining Doug Wilson and Moscow gets examined? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. And you're going to find out next on this show. Chuck or, Knox. Or it is pretty. <laughs> or, or it is pretty. It's real, real pretty. <laughs> All right. No Gabe today, so uh, we have Pastor Jared Longshore sitting in with us on this show. With his Bible open already. And, and he came in, Bible ready to go. Are you using Gabe's Bible? Yeah, I mean, oh, you're gonna get that. It was the one that was here. Oh, okay. The promised land anointing is gonna rub off on you. We're going Alexandrian text manuscript. Right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, guys. You listen to Cross Politics because you want to make an impact on the world. That impact requires time and money and the Holy Spirit. Allow us to introduce you to Dominion Wealth. They can't buy you more time, but they can help you build wealth over time with holistic financial strategies, including budgeting, insurance, investments, estate planning, and more. The mission of Dominion Wealth is not just to individuals, but to the broader Christian community. They educate, they advise, they build plans to reduce your donation to Caesar <laughs> so you can maximize your gift to God with strategies like family banking and capital maximization growth strategies. No matter your tax bracket there are solutions for every fiscal stage of life at dominion and for your children if you and your spouse want to take dominion over your finances book a complimentary consultation at reformed.money today reformed.money from baptism oh to burial message dominion has you covered once again that's reformed.money to book a complimentary consultation today all right so this Whole situation is about what ten years in the making. Is that right? Or, At least or longer, uh, longer maybe this longer. So I, I don't even really have to introduce this because everybody kind of knows. And the way that I know that everybody already knows what's going on is because it broke the internet. <laughs> Pastor Wilson came on here what a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, talking about um, how Moscow, basically the church, was going to start defending itself and protecting. The people around them because it has it's been known before when I first came to Moscow before I even came I posted something on Twitter saying something about how well Pastor Wilson was talking about a subject I don't even remember what the subject was all I remember mm. was that my ex or Twitter inbox at the time was full of people just bad mouthing him you know he hates black people you know he's a racist mm. you know that he's they're abusive up there you know that and I mean just like and all I did was like a retweet and say, wow, this is really good. And let me tell you, I've tweeted a lot of people. I've retweeted. So I have never gotten that much flack from a week a retweet. Mm. And so it set me up real quick. I had to go and figure out, okay, what did he say about Southern slavery as it was? And all. I'm going back and tracing it. And I'm, I'm noticing that people aren't paying attention to the context <laughs> at all. And so I'm just like, I've gotten used to it. I've kind of somewhat become callous to it and haven't been paying much attention um, anymore. But right now, um, and so this has been going on for at least that I can remember my involvement in knowing this 12 years. I've seen this kind of attitude, and it's, been, it's gotten worse over time. And one of the wonderful things that I've seen from Pastor Wilson and, um, and the church is that they've had all the answers on the website. If you have any questions, it's like, okay, what about this situation? What about that situation? You can go right to the website, and yeah. he has all the controversies, yeah. all of them. Laid out, it's timeline called, scripted. It's called the Controversy Library. Yes. The Controversy Library at, at DougWills.com. And so this has been 
for me, I'm kind of like, well, if you want the answers, they're right there. But people, people don't really want all the answers. <laughs> Instead, they like to follow things that are like a little extra juicy or maybe not as true. I had thought so. I never did like those people out there. <laughs> um, and that seems to be. So the church hired um, Claire and Locke. I want to say associate, but I don't think it's associate. But Claire and Locke, and these guys are no joke. Right. They, I didn't know this, but. Like the top defamation attorneys in the country. The, it, when, top for real. They don't play. Uh, they serious. <laughs> I will tell you this. I would not want to be on the other side <laughs> of this letter. Yeah. And it came out. And when it came out, the whole, I think the church website went down, what, twice? Yeah. And, and more. I don't know. Or more. I, I, the people, just, I mean. Just crashed yeah. the website. So everybody is reading it. And here's, I, I'll talk about what I love about it in just a second. But all the details are here. Nothing's hidden. It's laid bare. It's, it's just one of the most honest approach to uh, this telling the story and everything that's happened and how rightly things have been handled, mm. you know? Yeah. And it's just like, wow. When I was reading this, one of my first thoughts was, oh, they're dealing with sin. Mm. Who? The church. Oh, yeah. The church, where there's sin at. And, and, and y'all act like, oh, we ain't got no sin. And I'm going to tell you, I've been to some churches. There's a lot of sin because people sin. <laughs> I go there, so I know. Okay. <laughs> I, but I've watched and I'm like, oh, wow. Look at, look at what it looks like to deal with sin in the world. And it's encouraging. But I want to know when you guys saw this go out and you read it for the first time, first thoughts. On just reading the letter presented out there, Pastor Toby, you got you got to let Joe go first. I, 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 want, I want Joe to go first. As, as a guest, he, he's the guest. You kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, well, I was very pleased with it. I was very encouraged by pleased. it. Pleased. Oh, it, um, I do think that uh, Miss Locke, who was one of the signatories on the on the letter, um, clearly, I call her Libby. Clearly, <laughs> Miss Libby. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. We can right. That. Uh, I just loved it on so many fronts. Um, particularly, just given that she's obviously done the homework, she's actually done the reading, which is the thing that you said, uh, <laughs> kind of uh, at least in in modern evangelical world, the Christian world in America, that that's the thing that they don't want to do. So I was very encouraged. It was a reminder to me as a minister of the gospel when these these charges are going to increasingly come because of the disillusion of our civilization. Uh, we saw things like this with uh, John MacArthur's always been accused of various things. People will clip yes. what you say here and there. They'll strip it out of context, all of that. This was a reminder to to make sure that you are public in your ministry and mm. write and have your controversy library. This happened in my own, you know, I, boy, there were all sorts of things that I heard about Moscow before, you know. Before actually getting to know the it's people, it's kind of like in a Moscow. pamphlet, li- like comes with a whole package. Here, you go to Moscow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Here. a thing. And yeah. then there's different levels. So then there's the people that um, that know the things aren't true, but politically, given some of the things they want to achieve, it's just hard. They can't, you know, they, they can't use be friends. It. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so you just have all sorts of kind of levels, but. As you mentioned, the thing that's super clear is you just actually go read the te- go read the text, go read the book. I remember doing this with Black and Tan. You know, right. so I heard Doug's a racist. I read Black and Tan, <laughs> and I was just like, "Why are people upset? Like, yeah. why are people upset about this book?" Yeah. yeah, you know. And I know the crazy, crazy leftists would be like, "Well, you're obviously racist too because you like the book." But no, it's actually go read the book, go read um, the Controversy Library. So there's there's several citations in this particular. Um, in this particular letter that says, look, this is, um, there's, a, there's, there's a clear disregard for the truth because the truth is manifest in various publications, writings, right. online uh, yeah. ministry. Yeah. Coffee's here. C- come on yeah, in. Bree, come on in, Bree. You. It's okay. We're going to need that. We, we, need, we, need, we need coffee for this. That's right. Um, go ahead. Help yourself, Pastor Jared. Okay. Um, you, you know, I, it just so happens I've been uh, not just so happens. This is You've all, been, all in the Lord's. You, you're all, a native Lord's uh, work here, but um, but yeah, no, I've I've been here since 1998. I've kind of been been through uh, a whole bunch of these things. But what I was going to say is, um, I was also greatly encouraged. I, I I said as I read this, and I and I think it's just sort of um, just the encouragement of of somebody who is. Um, uh, cares about the truth. Yeah. Um, cares and has has cared about the truth um, um, publicly. Yeah. In in some pretty high profile cases, um, coming in and saying, "I looked at this, and here's the deal." Um, there's a bunch of facts 
that you are ignoring, um, that you are um, lying about, uh, and you are doing so either clearly willful in being willfully ignorant um, or willfully malicious. Um, but, but the thing that I want to say is um, uh, if you're a pastor or an elder or aspiring to be a leader in a church at all, um, you need— Hire the after party. <laughs> no. Oh, stop. Okay. Stop it. Sorry. Um, I was going to help you out. <laughs> uh, no, you need to get, if you have not yet, you need to buy the book, Calvin's Company of Pastors. Okay. Have you I, read this book? I'm doing it right now. Calvin's Company of Pastors is a an in-depth look at uh, the pastoral ministry of Calvin and the other pastors in Geneva during the Reformation and immediately following. And and the thing that is Ooh, forty two dollars. It's okay. worth every okay. penny. I'm getting every it right penny. Now. You, I'm getting it. Buy it twice. Okay. Um, and get it for all your elders. Get it for all your deacons, and work your way through it. Um, the the thing is, is that I don't think we get the we don't understand that like this is what we're dealing with here. What we're dealing with here is um uh what you what you deal with if you're being a faithful shepherd mm. and God is granting you um a, a public witness. Um, th- this is and and that and, and the really encouraging thing is you're reading through Calvin's and so like it goes through like the minutes of the of the of the elders and the pastors in Geneva and it's like you know so and so was called in and brought before the elders because uh, you know he he was uh, caught stealing from his neighbor so and so was brought in before the elders because uh, he was flirting with some girl during the sermon and, and <laughs> really it, and it, oh yeah oh yeah and in his defense he said it wasn't through the entire sermon. <laughs> <laughs> not even kidding you. Not even kidding you. Are you done? And and it's it's incredibly encouraging because uh, and this goes actually you know you you weren't you weren't you weren't joking. Like we we are living in a in a land that is um we, we are under a curse mm. and the curse is called the after party. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a judgment. It's a judgment where you've got pastors where 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 Curtis Chang can stand up in front of a bunch of pastors and insult them to their faces. You don't do anything important. Let us do the important things. And then all those pastors are cucks and like, yeah. 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 Oh, they are. Yeah. Let us do the hard work. Do the classic pastor thing. You know, suggest a few things, suggest a few things, and then you got plausible deniability. Like that like that's the bride of Christ. Mm. That's the bride of Christ that he ju- he just mocked, and 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 he just said, "You don't do anything important because if you did anything important, you'd have your inbox full on Monday morning, and, and you, you don't want that, and you don't want that. So keep doing um, things that are absolutely worthless." Yeah. And um, wow. and, we'll, and we'll do the hard work for you. And we wonder why we have so many millions of professing Christians who gather uh, for Lord's Day worship every Sunday, and we are uh, and we are so worthless mm. we are so impotent because we have pastors that refuse to pastor we have pastors that are lulled to sleep by this kind of siren song that says let us do the hard work for us david french and russell moore we're going to tell your, your, your people how to vote you you can just keep doing your thing in your life you don't even have to what's crazy is like you don't even have to agree with us no right no. so you can no. be a well, i don't uh, even yeah, you would let something that you don't no. agree with just come running right through your front door to your people what kind of shepherd are you the guy's name is uh, is it manage is, is is the author's name you were looking it up in a minute ago. i'm looking at you because i can't for, for who the, the uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah company of pastor i think it's manage or something like that let me go t- um, check my receipt um he <laughs> that's the tr- that's the ticket scott manage yep yeah he um he he's he's got this great section, per, per, particularly on the preaching, and he and he he points out that in Geneva and throughout the Reformation, the pulpit was the center of social commentary mm. and social change, and Reformation and transformation of Europe, mm. and um and and he, and he says and and so he tells this one story of this one preacher. Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm just going on. Go for Sorry. it, Pastor. Um, he t- there's one preacher in like 1595 who suddenly one Sunday uh, after or sometime during the week said, "I'm not preaching anymore. Hmm. I can't preach anymore." And he didn't tell anyone why. And what had happened was a scandal had developed, and the magistrates had exonerated, a, he believed, some um, guilty woman, and had condemned some innocent woman mm-hmm. in, in in the in in the, uh, the the Genevan magistrates, and. Um, and the and and he he real and he and he thought to himself, 
if I walk back up into that pulpit, I have to address this controversy. Mm. And so, and, and he decided to avoid public scandal. He says, I'm not preaching anymore. I'm done. Well, it was a scandal that he wouldn't preach. Yeah, yeah. And for six weeks, there's like virtual riots. It, it, it would, it, and, it, and it's like, you suddenly realize like for a preacher to stop preaching in Geneva was like Tucker refusing to go on like Fox. Yeah. Where's Tucker? I can't, Why is I can't, I'm not yeah, going yeah, on Fox yeah. anymore. I can't go on. I can't go on. And finally, after six weeks, the, the company of pastors basically threatens him. Like, you've got to. Pre-. And so he finally gives in, walks up to his pulpit and preaches one of the most fiery sermons he ever delivered, condemning the city council, um, insulting the, the um, King Henry uh, of France's wife. Mm. And the next day he's arrested and put in prison for a week. Mm. I feel God right there. Mm. Um, at the end of which he recants and repents and then carries on the rest of his ministry for another year, a number of years. And so you never really, he doesn't go into like, so who was right? We don't know. We don't right, know. Right, right. But the thing that he's using the story to demonstrate is it was an absolute scandal that a preacher stopped preaching. In our day, if a preacher stops preaching, we're like, oh, no, who cares? another one. We'll get another one. That's because it's understood to be a real government. Then. Ex- exactly. And then secondarily, the preacher knew. That if he walked up into the pulpit, yeah. it would be utter compromise not to d- to directly oh uh, address the most scandalous thing he was aware of in the city at that moment. And we don't do that. Everybody's like, why don't you just preach on, you know, giving or something? Mm. You know, why, why don't you just do a nice sermon on, you know, Psalm 23. Scratch your little ears. You know, going to heaven <laughs> when you die. You know, and, and, we, and, and then we wonder why the church in North America is so utterly impotent. Mm. Oh, I, I think giving can probably get you in some trouble. That's true. I, I know. That's probably a bad example. <laughs> it depends. But, uh, uh, it depends. And, and, and if you're talking about tithing. Just to amen your point, it, um, you need to be doing this uh, no matter what your text is. Now, there are certain um, – you need to be faithful to the particular yes. text that yes. you're preaching. Uh, but your job is to actually be involved in the application of the word. And uh, you're right about our impotent days. Uh, and – it, it we have to discover that our society is going into a different place. So you're, you're not preaching in the days of Billy Graham. Uh, you're not preaching in Aaron, Aaron Wren's positive world right. or neutral world. You are thoroughly in negative world. And uh, it does require courage to stand in the pulpit. You know, you, you're bound up to what God's going to, to say. And what he's saying is contrary, not only like personal opinion, but contrary to the very frameworks. Yeah. And so some of what's, what arises through the accusations that come is they're just – there's two paradigms that are colliding right. on the issue of masculinity and femininity, right. uh, on on matters of sex, matters of um, law, what's going on, right. uh, matters of uh, civil politics. On every one of these lines, you're going to start saying things. If you're going to say what's what's there in the text, it's going to bring um, not just I don't like that guy, but it's going to start to bring um, – genuine right. slanders that are going to going to necessitate the kind of situations we find ourselves in. And this goes to your point, Knox, is I think what you have though is is that we have we have we, and I mean preachers, I mean pastors and elders, we have relegated ourselves mm. to irrelevancy. Yes. By re- yes. by refusing to take up the authority of God's word. And 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 I think one of the things she points out in the in the this letter that was glorious is you know you've got on the one hand um, this accusation that in certain sexual scandals um, not enough inquiry was made, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. didn't ask enough questions. You didn't ask enough questions. And then flip around to another and controversy, exactly. and it's like, and they were um, asking these questions. They were exa- They were they were peering into, prying into the private sex lives of of minors in high school. Yeah, and. and well, what? Which one is it? Do Do you want us to know what's going on? Do you want us to care for our people or not? And um, and, and I think the issue is is authority. The, the 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 issue is is they do not want the church to have the authority of God to minister His gospel to real sin to, in real on. people's lives. You better you better preach that. Here's there's two things that um really hit me and I walked away with. And I think the first one doesn't seem like. Uh, a, a big deal. The first one was the gospel, and the second thing was justice. Now, mm-hmm. th- and it sh- probably should have went the other way around. But this is what hit me because, and actually, this hit me a long, long time ago, maybe six, seven years ago. Because when I went to the site, when the controversies happened and all the stuff was going on, everybody was talking. I went to the to the um, Pastor Wilson site, the church site, blog and May blog, I think is where it is actually. Yeah. And I went looked up the controversies. And I started being like, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> or has gone on. Yeah. And, and then it hit me. 
There's a two hour conversation, a, a three hour conversation that uh, Darren Doan had with Pastor Wilson. Yep. Yep. All my friends are heretics. Yeah, look it up on YouTube. You look it up on YouTube. All my friends are heretics. It's going to rock you. And this is what this did to me. Again, it reminded yep. me of the gospel because I went back and said, oh my goodness, I sit next to some of these people. Yeah. It's like, and then if the gospel isn't real, then I need to leave Christianity. If the gospel can't solve the problems of this person and that person and me, right. then what is it good for? And I started to realize, wait a second, if you believe the gospel, then you shouldn't be surprised that you sit next to certain people. Right. You're like, look what God did in this person's life. And here's what's crazy. I take communion with these people. Right. Because the gospel's real and really does transform and change people's lives. And if this person can't take their sin to Jesus, where can they go? Right. And if I can't take my right. sin to Jesus, and right. it's and it's one of those things where some there's easy for us to be so self righteous about our sin and forget you aren't in a different position than the guy you're sitting next to. Right, they're sitting next to you. They're sitting. Come on now. And if the gospel don't work on them, good luck, buddy. Yeah. Right. Good luck. Right. And people who believe the gospel don't have a problem applying it to the worst type of people. Right. Right. And if you can't understand that, then you don't understand Christianity and what Jesus has done for you. Yeah. And and that hit me like a ton of bricks because I was like, I'm the I'm the guy who's like, Lord, I'm thankful that I'm not like them. Yeah. Right. And it broke me down to the point where I started saying, Oh my goodness, the gospels, if we how are we going to reach the trans person who's actually cut themselves up in pieces right. if we don't think the gospel transformed that person? Right. That's the kind of people we want to be sitting next to on Sunday morning. Right. That's the kind of people we want to be breaking bread with, the transformed person, because the gospel has convicted them and they've repented of their sin. Right. And when you deal with people like that, it's going to be messy. What? what? Come it's, on. It's Have you read Corinthians? It, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where I turned. <laughs> Did you? Okay. That's where I turned. But you know, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. That's people going to prostitutes and addicted to porn. You. Idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind. That's sodomites. Uh, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. They shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were mm. sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. But the de- the deal is is as as we we want um, we want everything to be as simple as Lazarus raised from the dead. Mm. We we want everything to be just Jesus says the word and it just a light switch goes off and everybody's done with their sin. But read the rest of Corinthians. Right. Read the rest of Corinthians. You know, you got this guy in the church who's shacking up with his stepmom. You got people going to temple prostitutes still, and Paul's like, "No, nah, you're a Christian now. We don't do that yeah, anymore." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them uh, guys dead. Yeah, yeah. They got people getting drunk at the Lord's Supper yeah. and factions, <laughs> and it's like, you know, how, how's your church doing? And notice what Paul does. He deals with the sin, and it's messy. And he writes this letter, preaches this sermon, and guess what? It didn't go over just all smooth. It wasn't like everybody was like, "Oh, we didn't know that was sin." He sorry, got examined sorry, too. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> No, there's a second Corinthians. Yeah, yeah. And by the time of second Corinthians, he's been accused of being a false apostle. He's he not clearing a lot. Yeah, no, he's got <laughs> there's people showing up and being like, you know, he he always shows up and he's really harsh. Yeah. He's really mean, and he's always asking for money. Yep. Yep. And Paul's got to write the second Corinthians being like, I'm not sorry. I am a real apostle. Um, you're the proof of my apostleship because mm. he saved you. And um all this all this controversy is a sign that I'm actually shepherding you. This is the real gospel because God is determined for the glory to shine forth in earthen vessels. Yeah. Like us. This has happened before, but uh what's what's shaking out now in our present controversies is a testimony to the broader uh church in the states about what is coming. There I, it's very easy to be a Christian right now and think, well boy, um I, I wouldn't want to be a part of a church like that that's so public because if I sin, it would really it would be put all over the news. It might. Occasionally, we'll get contacts from other people, and they'll be like, "So we heard about what happened with so and so, one of your one of yeah. your church members." Yeah, and you know, and they're they're and and every now and then we'll just be like, "Okay, but." But do you remember what you told us about what happened to one of your church members? Like, it's just this one, you know, one of the— But this so, one's in the news. So This one's in the news. And, okay, so granted, there is a disparity now, 
But given the change in the times, this is the kind of thing that's coming everywhere. If you're going to be be faithful, they're coming for you. Pastors are going to have to learn how to deal with it. Congregants are going to have to learn how to deal with it. There's, there's There's a guy we hired to do some work at our house. Uh, recently, I love the story. Conservative guy, good guy. He showed up, and he had heard uh, that that we were at Christ Church. I was a minister at Christ Church. It was very funny because he's he like he tells my wife he's like we love you guys, <laughs> yes. and we love you guys. Yeah. And he's like, I mean, I could never join because I have a business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got a business, but we really appreciate yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And it was this, it was this great moment. But so, but there's a, there's like a, you know, we need a, we need a preparation kit for this kind of thing. One of the comforting truths is, if you look back in church history, this is how it has always shaken down. Mm. Okay, this is this is what persecution is when, when, when. Uh, there, and there's going to be something real that happens, and everyone's got to recover their theology of the nature of the church. Right. Uh, there are going to be tares among the wheat, and there's, there's going to be yep. that kind of thing. Yep. Then there's going to be genuine wheat that has stumbled, yep. and pastors have to know that part of their business is uh, covering sin. Love covers a multitude of sins, yep. and uh, part of their job is exposing sin, yeah. and they're going to need wisdom when it comes down to what's going on here. All of it is an opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, Amen. and that we're a bunch of justified sinners, and yes, there's still uh, parts of the bride that are going to have to be be um, cleansed and sanctified, no. but indeed, that's the work that that we're going after. And, and there's something that really is, and when you said that it needs to be wisdom, this is why that this scares me, because one of the things in this letter that was cir- I circled because I thought it was massive, it said, you refuse to attach your own names to your propaganda. So this whole examining Moscow and uh, examining Doug Wilson in Moscow has been, had pure amenity. Nobody knows really who's behind yeah. this, right? right. And why would any Christian, why would any Christian ref- take any sort of accusation without an identity of an individual to say yes? Yeah. Because biblical law requires no am- anonymity. Yeah, you got you 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 to you be able to cross-examine witnesses. Right. So if you're going to bring an accusation, well, who's bringing it? Yeah. Well, right. That's, but- remember, this is the kind of thing that got the woman who was going to be stoned off. Yep. <laughs> Right. Jesus didn't play yeah. that. Yeah, there, this right. was, you don't get to come and just bring yeah. accusations and not be. Who, right. Where is the? Where's your accusers? That lady? Right. Oh, they ain't here. Well, you're free to go. Don't sin right. no more. Right. right. And so, but biblical law, the wisdom that we have in the Christian church right now, people are just like just taking stuff. It's like, wait a second. What does the law say? How does God do justice? What are these people? You got to take it. Put your names on the front. Yeah. The thing the thing that biblical justice does, and this is this is something that we've got to recover, is it protects everyone. Yes. And and I think this this the kind of pastoring that says we will not accept um frivolous charges without two or three witnesses, we will not accept charges against elders without two two at least two witnesses. Uh, we're going to establish everything um by biblical justice. This is the thing that's gonna protect you. In that's the long right. term. And, that, and that's, that's the thing that people sometimes don't, don't remember, they don't understand, is like this kind of pastoring. We just, you guys, we just had um, uh, the, the, test case, the test run of co- you know, COVID. Yes. And, and a whole bunch of pastors um, did not stand up. They did not stand up. They did not say the word of God says this and this is what we have to do. And a whole bunch of people said, whoa. We got to find a, we got to find our people. We got to find pastors and churches yeah. that are stand. And the same thing applies and even more crucially – to how they're going to deal with your sin. How are they going to deal with your son, your daughter, your marriage, your neighbor, your business? Are they going to go back to the word? Are they going to study the word or not? Is it biblical principles of justice that then don't change with um, anything? Yeah. Justice is blind. That's right. And, and there, therefore, um, it actually protects you. And then in that, in that protection offers you the healing of the gospel um, or else protects you from real predators and from, from real wolves. Um, or else um, they're going to say, nah, you know, we don't really do that. We don't get into that kind of stuff because that's messy. And I, you know, I've got a ministry to protect. I've got a brand to protect. Um, yeah, yeah. And, um, and there you are hung out to dry uh, with, with your situation. I know we got to get Jared out of here. Yeah. You got last words. Oh, that was man. really good. Thank you. See, Jared. I have so many things that I want to say, but you haven't given me time. I've, I've got, what, uh, what, what did you get your Bible open to? Well, I've got my Bible open. That's another to ten minutes. The book of James. It is another ten minutes. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you James four eleven. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. Mm. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? 
it's very interesting that speaking evil of your brother is is um, tied to speaking evil of the law in a rejection of actually saying there is a there's an order that God has given us and we are to abide by that order. And when it comes to our especially our technological age, our fragmented age, our individualistic age, we think well, um, free speech just means I get to pop off however yeah. I want, whenever I want. Those sentiments right. are deeply embedded in us. Even go back to the 1960s and Supreme Court case and the way that affects even people that are in public. And so all of the inclinations are in that direction. And it's a sign of our, we don't fear God. Um, certainly, we speak truth, and when people make errors, we're going to uh, correct those errors publicly. We're going to actually address them. But you're realizing when it comes to our very civilization and the way that we're structured at the moment, if you get rid of God, if you get rid of the lawgiver, you're going to have people speaking evil in every direction. You're going to have absolute disarray because he's he's no longer ordering Mm-hmm. The truth. How can you say yeah. what you've said is false? This is right. defamation because what you've said is false. If you've given up on the lawgiver, right? right? So when mm-hmm. you do that kind of thing, it's it's evidence of where where we are as a society that's Every, turned our back on God. Everyone becomes their own lawgiver. And back to judges, huh? And, and yeah, everyone, writing their yeah, own, yeah, own that's right. All right. Hey, Pastor. Thank you for joining us. Indeed. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming yeah, in. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you're single, get married. If you're married, have some kids. If you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh. You want to talk a little bit more? Feast. This is cross politics. Sure. Why not? Uh, we're, we're, we're Did you see? We're, he almost shook my fist. Uh, like I, it was supposed to be a fist bump. You were open first. Oh, okay. Well, what are we doing here? See, I'm confused. Can you just give me a fist bump because you know you know better than that. I don't know what you're doing Still over there. Still too white. <laughs> nah, I know where you come from. We got pictures of you. What do they call you the ghetto country boy? Or something. This? <laughs> oh, that's a. Um, yeah, that's why I asked the same thing. Th- that is a. It's a. Oh, now I've totally forgot the name of it. But basically, it takes and makes hydrogen out of the more hydrogen in my water. Go do your thing, I, Pastor. I, I thought hydrogen. We already had hydrogen in our water. Yeah, but it makes more and it. Appreciate you, Jerry. Hydrate you better. You know, the, the thing that we really kind of got done, because um, Pastor had to run, but yeah. I really am a little, the more I thought about this, there should be such a, a biblical understanding of God's law, a, a meditation on God's law, that people who bring accusations who don't identify who they are should immediately on the front face of this yeah. be not taken seriously. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just at, just at the very right. beginning, like if you anonymous don't anonymous accusations are not accusations that any Christian can take seriously, right? And, Period. And so, full stop. It made me think, what kind of people are we that we will take anonymous accusations and then say, "Well, I don't know." We should say, "Why isn't the 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 people turning to say?" Who are you, and why are you making this accusation? And won't reveal who you are. You don't get right. to do this. We should be rejecting right. this type of of right. stuff, right. Uh, just on just right on his face, right? Right. But somehow, in the culture that we live in now, when Pastor Wilson comes up here and writes on the website and lists everything, we still give credibility to stuff like this. Yeah, you that's, know what I mean. That, so that's let, just let me how just, screwed let me up just we re- are. Let me just read the the biblical principle for yes. this. The, this this is repeated in the New Testament. The necessity of two or three witnesses. First Timothy five is one place, um, and it's it's illustrated in Matthew eighteen in the in church discipline. Yeah. You've got to have two or three witnesses. Here in Deuteronomy nineteen, Deuteronomy nineteen says one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity, or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Then, But then this, if a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him, that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall he do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you and those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. Thy eye shall not pity, but life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. And 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 here's the connection. Here's the connection. An anonymous witness, an anonymous accusation cannot be cross examined to see if it's false. If you don't know who they cross are, cross examine who? Then they then they can't they can't stand before the judges. And if they are found to be false, they cannot be punished with the Penalty that they would have given to their brother. Yeah. And so this is why it, it, it cannot stand, and, and it makes it clear. In any iniquity, any sin, two or three witnesses, and if you don't have two or three witnesses, then it's, it's, it's nothing. And, and um, th- 
So uh, that's that's exactly right. And I think the other the other thing is is that just Proverbs eighteen seventeen is one of these just basic life principles that all Christians ought to have. Um, the the one who states his case first, yeah, always yeah. seems plausible and reasonable. And you should always be thinking to yourself, what's the other side? Yep. What's the other side? And by the way, um, in any of these controversies, our controversies, we would say the same thing. Feel free to ask, what, what's the other side? Um, we, 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 um, and so we've not, um, this is why Pastor Wilson has a controversy library. Yeah. Um, uh, this, is, um, this is why in, in our community, people are welcome. We tell them regularly, hey, if you, if you hear something on the internet, you see something weird on the internet and you want to ask about it. Feel free. Feel free. Ask a question anytime. We're happy to answer any questions. Um, and we do it routinely, and it's not a big deal. But there really is other so- There is another side, um, and uh, and at the same time, I would say uh, frequently the accusations that are being brought against us are anonymous, or they're demonstrated very easily uh, to be um, ludicrous or lying. I, um, man, this is you know. Do, do you think? I'm wondering. You know, when you get a letter like this, it was really telling to me to watch kind of the response. Some things online started missing, started not, posts were deleted, yeah, started seeing yeah. stuff go away. Suddenly. Suddenly. Yeah. But, you know, I was thinking about this, but this, wouldn't it be awesome? And I think that I'm around the kind of people that are like this. I believe I've watched a whole controversy um, with um, uh, the whole piece that Darren did, young lady reconciled with Doug, I can't remember, um, Natalie, Natalie yes. Greenfield. And and watching and like and hearing about that, that was awesome, right? And knowing that because the gospel is real, it would be amazing to see examining Doug Wilson yeah. in Moscow repent in a real relationship of brotherly yeah. could can have some sort of connection. There was like, we're in fellowship. We're we're actually I can believe that. Like whoever right. these people are, right. wouldn't it be amazing for the gospel to convict them right. and their heart and transform yeah. People act like that that can't happen anymore. Right. Right. And that's what's so like this is right. what really drives me nuts about this is but, that but this Paul, is a, but Paul was reconciled. R- right. Right. Pa- Paul right. Saul of Tarsus was running, examining um Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. He was running that, that website. Right. <laughs> like he, and 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 Jesus interrupted him yeah. and and saved him and converted him. And um, and did that with other Pharisees too. I, I don't think in the fight because the fight is so feverish right now, and everybody whether there's transgenderism, whether there's SBC stuff going on, whether it's um, uh, you know Greg Johnson now not anymore in the PCA, that everything is so feverish right now that people forget that there that's what the gospel does. It actually makes things right, racial reconciliation stuff, and it, it, it used. In a real way where God takes things that are broken, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it restores brothers to real fellowship. And when people act like this, that's what they intentionally forget. Like, were there things that happened? Of course. Yeah. But that's but man, there I, is a real call to repentance at the end of the letter. Also, yes, and that's not yes. accidental. These, no. these attorneys are Christians. Yes. And and they're and they're serving a Christian church. And we we really do want repentance. We really do want reconciliation. We really do want fellowship in Christ. I there was a, and I'm not going to say all the details, but there was something that went down, and I was a little upset about it. And I watched you and Gabe work through it in such a Christian way, and I and it convicted me mm. because I realized that the way I was thinking about the situation was I wanted blood. <laughs> I, I didn't tell you this at the time, oh. but um, but I, in a, in a way like. I'm going to win, and and I'm I'm want to make sure that you understand that. And 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 it was um and you know and I realized when you guys were talking, you guys were more concerned about the reconciliation of the environment than who lost what. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Right. And I sat there and watched that, and I was like, I ain't sanctified enough yet. Mm. You know what I mean? And and to the point that that wasn't the first thing that popped in my mind was the sanctification, so that the that we are restored back to fellowship, not about what was lost. We'll get to that. Yeah. But can we get the fellowship and repentance going on so that when it's time to restore those things, it's not the restored things that brings us back together. It's Jesus that brings us back together. Right. And then because of him, those things get restored. Yeah. And it was so convicting. And it reminded me of like my mentality, the way that I was thinking about this is the same way that the culture 
in America right now is thinking about things. Mm-hmm. Reparations. We want it. Give us that. And it's like, you don't get anything restored apart from Jesus. Right. And unless Jesus reconciles um, reconciles you guys together through his blood and the forgiveness of sins, you don't get the things that you're trying to grasp for. Right. Yeah, if our, if our hearts are not changed, then we're just going to keep doing it. Exactly. And so the— the You can't put it back the, right. The money, the position, the power— you know, all those things. Yeah. Like you're just rearranging the furniture on the Titanic. Yes. If you don't fix the problem. That's right. And the problem is in the heart. And, and so, yeah, I, I've, I've thought about this in terms of um, when you're in this, when you're in conflict, I, I, I thought about this um, in, in um, uh, this is in first Corinthians 10 is a famous verse where, where, um, where Paul says, no temptation mm. has overtaken you except as is common to man with the temptation. God always makes a way of escape that yeah. you may be able to bear up under it, which says that, so God is, is the kind of God, even in his justice, mm. even in his justice, he is constantly making a way of escape. Mm. He, he, he's rooting for us to get out. Wow. And, and he is, he's running ahead of us saying, how about this way? How about this? And in our stubbornness, we're like, no, Wisdom's no. Wisdom's crying out in the street, right? No. And, and yeah, he says, how about this way? Here's the way out. Here's the way out. Here's the way out mm. of temptation. Here's the way out. Confess your sin. Get clean. Come back in. That's God. Like, God, I mean, again, God is the father in the, prod, in the parable of the prodigal who's looking down the road for his son. And as soon as he sees him, goes running. Mm. A, 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 an old man running to, to, to welcome his son back, back home and, and, and then throw a party for him. God is like that with us. Mm-hmm. And so we're required to be that way with everyone, mm. like looking for a way to get them out of it and knowing that when they're in sin, we're in where they're trapped by the devil in their guilt and in their shame. Like th- there is justice that can't be, you, you, you should not just throw it out, but at the same time, you should be constantly looking for a way to get them out. There's a mm. way out. There's always a way out through repentance. There's always a way out um, of the temptation. And so parents, Think this way with your kids. Yeah. Yes, there's principles, right. but how do you help them out? There's ways of cornering them that only only um, sort of pushes them to more sin, hardens right. them. But, right. but be, be praying for ways to help them out. Get them out. Help them see real repentance, not just fake, but real repentance. Pastors, the same thing. When you when when your people are in sin, you're constantly trying to help them find a way out. Get out. Repent. Um. Get into the light. Um. And. Uh, and I, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. There's a heart here, and I, I was thinking of even just the in First Corinthians six again before mm-hmm. the such or some of you, um, uh, you know, dare any of you having a matter against another go to a law before the unjust and not before the saints. Yeah. Um, and and then and he says, uh, you know, I, um, he says a brother goes to law with brother that before the unbelievers. Um, he says now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law with one another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded. Um, if, if, if I can take the hit and my brother can be made right with me, mm. like take that's worth way more, right? It's worth way more. And, um, and I think that's a, a really crucial piece of the backstory in all this, of course, too, is that, I mean, Jesus really is clear that we are to turn the other cheek. Mm-hmm. We are to go the extra mile. We are to give, uh, when we're, we're demanded of and, and personally ought to be willing to be wronged and defrauded as much as uh, we can, mm-hmm. um, if we can somehow win our brother, if we can somehow win them, and, and in, in this situation with this letter and, and and this step, this is this is decades in 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 the making, yeah, and and it's really not at all about even the the persons behind this anonymously. No, no, no. Um, if they were just doing their thing and continuing to slander, we would just keep you know batting away the bees, yeah. And if we saw them on the street, said you know, hey, you don't know how to be that way. <laughs> if we knew who they were, um, hey, you know, we, can we get coffee? Can we get a beer? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we we would we would be willing to reach out to them personally, individually, to tr- for reconciliation. But but what has happened is that they've started taking the show on the road, mm. and it's starting to get sort of plausibility in semi-respectable publishing houses, uh, which is now creating who should know the law of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are not haven't checked uh, their facts well enough, and what we're wanting to do is there is a place even as Paul does when he appeals to Caesar and appeals to the governors, is at, at some point certain accusations become so public and have such public ramifications for all the people of God um, that it's, it's, it's important um, to defend 
um, the gospel, defend the ministry. Well, and, and, uh, and we want to do that while continuing to honor these principles. And at the same time, what this letter does in a really helpful way is it says there really is another narrative. If you just, if you're just silence, you're just silent and you let uh, lies just go, go, yeah. go, go, go. Eventually lies pile on top of lies, pile on top of lies. And it can create a kind of plausibility structure that says, yeah. you know, everybody's sort of um, citing the same sources, but it sounds like it's now two or three or four witnesses. The dossier that came out on Trump. Yeah, exactly. That's e- what it is. Everybody says, yeah. everybody knows. Well, it's yeah. like we we want in the name of truth, um, be, in the name of Christ, um, to make sure that we're leaving a paper trail of another narrative that says, no, the facts are actually this for the protection of God's people, for the protection of, of, the, of the ministry of the gospel. Um, and for the truth just to be known. Well, think about the guy who was doing work in Jared's house. Yeah. He's like, man, yeah. love you guys. Appreciate you guys. I can't go there because I, I can't have a be company. Associated. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that's not fair. Yeah. You know, and he knows it's not true, but he, he it's so much lies built upon each other. Yeah. And so I think this is good for the body. And just, I mean, just the fact that everybody gets to read this publicly. Oh, no. It's, it's just it's a huge, fantastic. It's a huge blessing. It's a huge encouragement. We're so thankful for Claire and Locke. And and the work, there's a bunch of folks behind the scenes um, helping as well, and and just so grateful for it. So can't wait to see what all this. I pray yeah. repentance comes yeah. from this. Yeah, yeah. My name is Jamie Piles. I joined Samaritan in December of 1996. We were homeschooling our kids, and we were already thinking outside the world's box, if you will. And I saw a little tiny classified ad about this new kind of idea I'd never heard of before. My first reaction was. That's the kind of thing that we would do, isn't it? And so I finally called the number, talked to them, and the more I asked them questions, the more I liked their answers. 